how much space is occupied by that object. Here we have a sphere that we want to find the volume of. To help us find its volume, we're going to compare it to a cylinder that has the same dimensions. Remember, on a sphere, the height and diameter are the same measurement. So the height on both the sphere and the cylinder is 6 centimeters. In order to make it easier to compare, we're going to take our sphere and put it inside our cylinder. When we do that, we can see we have extra space around the top and the bottom of the sphere that aren't filled completely. This tells us the volume of the sphere is going to be a fraction of the volume of the cylinder. To find that fraction, we're going to take our sphere and squish it down and fill in all those empty spaces. When we do, we see that our sphere fills a fraction of the cylinder like we predicted. In fact, it fills approximately one-third, two-thirds of the entire cylinder. This tells us volume of the sphere is going to be two-thirds the volume of the corresponding cylinder. From our model, we saw the volume of the sphere is worth two-thirds the volume of the corresponding cylinder. This means volume of a sphere is two-thirds times pi times radius squared times height. Well, let's take that equation and see if we can simplify it any. First off, on a sphere, we know that the height of a sphere is equal to its diameter. But our equation already uses radius, so we know that a diameter is also equivalent to twice the radius. So we can go ahead and change height to radius. So volume right now is going to be 2 thirds pi r squared, and then instead of height, we're going to put in 2 times our radius. Well, now we can simplify a little bit more because we can rearrange our values. We can move our 2 over to be with our 2 thirds. So that means we have 2 times 2 thirds pi r squared r. Well, let's go ahead and multiply those together. 2 times 2 thirds means we would have 2 over 1 times 2 thirds. Multiply your numerators, multiply your denominators, and we would have 4 thirds. So let's put that back into our equation. Now we have 4 thirds pi r squared R. Well, let's think about what exponents means. Radius squared means we have radius times radius. So radius times radius, and then that's multiplied by another radius. So we can combine all of our radii and just call that radius cubed. That brings us to our final simplified form. To find volume of a sphere, we can do 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed, and that'll give us the volume of any sphere. Use our equation to find the volume of the sphere. We saw volume of a sphere could be simplified down to volume is 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. Well, the first thing we notice is on this sphere, they give us a diameter of 6, which means we need to find its radius. Radius is always half the diameter, so that means we need to do 6 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so on this sphere, our radius is 6 centimeters. So now we can substitute that into our equation. That means our volume is going to be 4 thirds times 3.14 for pi multiplied by 3 cubed. Now let's take a moment to remember what exponents means. To the third power means we need to multiply the number by itself that many times. So we would have three threes. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So that means at this point our equation is going to say four thirds times 3.14 times 27. Well we can multiply in any order so we're going to go ahead and do the 3.14 times 27. So that leaves us with four thirds times 84 and 78 hundredths. We can multiply that volume by four thirds, that comes out to give us a total volume of 113 and 4 hundredths. This is labeled in centimeters, so this is also going to be cubic centimeters.